Thanks for joining me here again at ButNowMinistry.org and today we are continuing our study through keys to understanding the Bible and this is part 29 and this is going to talk about keys number 61 and keys number 62. Key number 61, prophecy and mystery cannot be mixed. Romans 11.6, and if by grace then it is no more of works, otherwise grace is no more grace. But if it be of works, then it is no more grace, otherwise work is no more work. It is also rather profound in that the joining of things that God has separated leads to dangerous doctrinal error as in attempts to mix law and grace, prophecy and mystery, and the body of Christ with Israel. Romans 6.14, For sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. Ephesians 1.10, That in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on the earth, even in him. So in the dispensation of the fullness of times is when he is going to gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and both and which are on the earth. And unfortunately, most ministries have put them all together today. Most denominations, non-denominations will have them together today. And like when I was at Harvest Translation Chapel, they said that the body of Christ was going to go through the tribulation. That's because they did not rightly divide. They did not keep the mystery separate from prophecy. They did not keep Israel separate from the body of Christ. Paul's very clear that we're not going to go through, that we're saved from the wrath to come. But because they're not Pauline and they don't understand the revelation of the mystery, they mix them all together in the spiritual blunder. And ultimately, that spiritual blunder sends souls to hell. Romans 16, 17, and 18. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause division and offenses, contrary the, to the doctrine which ye have learned. And that's exactly what it is. It's contrary to Pauline truth. It's contrary to rightly dividing. It's contrary to um, the mid-acts position when the body of Christ starts with the Apostle Paul. And 2 Thessalonians 3.14 is very clear on it. If any man obey not our word by this epistle, note that man and have no company with him. So we are to avoid people that mix up the doctrine. We are to avoid people that are not clear about Pauline truth. Are you doing that? Why should we avoid people? Well, you have no company with him, 2 Thessalonians 3.14, that he may be ashamed. Okay, that's why. Key number 62. Israel's program is always faith plus performance. Faith plus performance, okay? Today in the dispensation of grace, it's faith without performance to be saved, to have your soul's salvation by the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. The free gift of God is what saves us today. But in Israel's program, it, it was always faith, believing in the Messiah, repenting, getting water baptized, believing in the Messiah, and then performing because, always performed because they were always under a law and a covenant which was only given to Israel. And people have a hard time with this because I've gotten emails of people who can't believe they're not under the covenant. Well, it's because you can't believe that you believe your Bible finally, okay? Because Paul says in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 12, that we're not under the covenant and we're not under the promises, right? Ephesians chapter 2, verse 12 says that at that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. And what happens though, when people get saved today, they think they get grafted in, Romans 9, 10, and 11, into Israel's covenant because they don't know how to keep them separate. Like I said in key number 61, God doesn't put the earthly program and the heavenly program until the dispensation of the fullness of times. So don't put them together today. People are even tripping over Galatians chapter 3 with Abraham and the promise given to the seed. 
okay? We have our promise according to the revelation of the mystery. Our promise is not according to Abraham's seed, okay? You need to keep Abraham's seed and the body of Christ separate. They're two different programs. Don't get tripped up in Paul's writings. You need to rightly divide Paul's writings. And that is why it's always important to understand the doctrine. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the majority of their writings before Christ dies on the cross is Old Testament on the authority of Hebrews 9, 15 through 17. And for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament that by means of death for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the First Testament, they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. Verse 16, for where a testament is, there must also of necessity be the death of a testator. And verse 17, for a testament is of a force after men are dead, otherwise it is of no strength at all while the testator liveth. Now, this is where most of your denomination, non-denominational churches are, right? They're in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And what do they tell most people that they think are saved? They call them New Testament Christians because they believe the insert that says New Testament before the book of Matthew, in between Malachi and Matthew, right? Well, that insert's wrong according to God's Word. Okay? God's Word says that the New Testament does not start for Israel until Christ dies for Israel. Okay? So anything before the death burial and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John is Old Testament. Get that into your noodle because most do not believe that. Most do not teach that. Okay? And then after Jesus Christ was buried and rose again, died, buried, and rose again on the cross in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, that is when the New Testament begins for Israel in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. The body of Christ is not there yet, not until the Apostle Paul is saved in Acts chapter 9. Okay, so there's no church, the body of Christ. So why you would think any of the commissions in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are for you today is just 2,000 years of ignorance. Okay, 2,000 years of ignorance. It was only given to Israel. Anyway. Our commission has changed. If you want to use the word commission, it's not in the Bible, but our commission is Galatians chapter 2, verse 9. Okay? Only Israel was given the Old Testament and the New Testament. I don't know how much clearer the Bible can be, but people will still insert themselves in these verses because they don't understand that they're not under the Old Testament law. They're not Israel. They're not under a covenant. They don't believe Paul's writings. They don't believe the revelation of the mystery. They don't even know what the revelation of the mystery is. If you're using a new translation, you will not understand the revelation of the mystery. The word dispensation is not found. Rightly dividing is not found. To study the word of God is not found. The gospel of the grace of God, though, is found in your new translations. It's 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4. But... They will always add a work to that gospel. They will always add a work to the death, burial, and resurrection, which makes the cross of Christ of none effect. Galatians chapter 2, verse 21. If you add righteous works to the gospel, you make the gospel of none effect. Paul is very clear in Galatians. So don't be a fool and do that. Galatians 2, 21. I do not frustrate the grace of God, for if righteousness come by the law, so that's Galatians 2, 16, and Titus 3, 5, in one verse. Then Christ is dead in vain. If righteousness come by the law, and all these people are claiming that they're keeping the commandments. And by the way, in the Old Testament, Israel never kept the commandments. That's why they got the New Testament. But I guess they're better than Israel. <clears throat> Exodus 19.1 In the third month when the children of Israel were gone forth out of the land of Egypt, the same day came they into the wilderness of Sinai. Verse 3 And Moses went up unto God, and the Lord called unto him out of the mountain, saying, Thus shalt thou say to the house of Jacob, and tell the children of Israel. Notice, the body of Christ is not there because Scripture, because the Bible is right. The Bible says the revelation of the mystery was kept secret since the world began. Okay, So you're not going to find it in here. Believe your Bible, okay? Let God be true and every man a liar. Romans chapter 4, verse 3. Or Romans chapter 3, verse 4. Exodus 19, 5. Now therefore, if you will 
Obey my voice indeed, and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. Verse 6, And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests, and a holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. Are we going to be a kingdom of priests? No, we're ambassadors. Are we going to be a holy nation? No, we're seated in heavenly places. Okay, we're the church, the body of Christ, which is not found back here in Exodus because it was kept secret. Okay? I just want to put that in because I think some of you people out there are having a hard time rightly dividing. And don't get me wrong, I sometimes I have a hard time with it too. You have to step back, you have to think about the doctrine that you know, you have to think about Pauline truth, and you have to ask yourself if the church, the body of Christ, belongs there. Does the church, the body of Christ, fit in to every verse that you read? That's what you have to ask yourself when you're studying the Bible. This was prophesied in the Old Testament and confirmed in the New. In the Old Testament, by the prophet Jeremiah, he prophesied in Jeremiah 31, 31, and 32, and 33 about Israel getting the New Testament and what happens when they do. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, and I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt. And by the way, Israel was freed and let go out of Egypt, correct? This is what I don't understand. All the new translations come out of Egypt, the Alexandrian text. Why would you use a text that by the people that actually held Israel in bondage. That's something you need to ask yourself if you're using a New American Standard or, you know, the NIV or the ESV or the Message Bible. That's even better. I, I can't believe they call that a Bible. The Massage is what I call it. But anyway, Jeremiah 31, 33, But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, saith the Lord, I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts and will be their God, and they shall be my people. I remember some people at church saying that that was done to them. I mean, how much more can you lie to yourself? The Bible says it was given to Israel. And you have this guy going to my church saying, Oh yeah, that's what he did for us. He gave us a new heart. He put the law in our hearts. I mean, these people just don't understand Pauline truth. When Paul says we're not under the law, we're under grace, that is exactly what the Bible means. When Paul says we're in the dispensation of grace, that is actually, actually where we are. We're in the butt now, and God is dispensing grace today as a free gift. Okay? Hebrews 8.8 8. But most pastors, most scholars, most commentators don't believe that. They do not believe the revelation of the ministry. If you don't believe that, look at any commentary and see if they talk about Galatians chapter 2, verse 7, where Paul's gospel of the uncircumcision is contrary to Peter's gospel of the circumcision. They do not commentate on that. They don't want it to be two different gospels. They want to mix it all together like the new translations do. And that's how you know when a commentator may not be a Bible believer. Hebrews 8.8, 8, For finding fault with them, he saith, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant. And now this is New Testament. This is the book of Hebrews confirming what the Old Testament prophets prophesy. Okay? It's coming true in the New Testament. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers. And notice, it's the same verse. In the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, because they continued not in my covenant. Hey, look at that. They continued not in my covenant. So Israel did not keep the covenant in the Old Testament, which is the Ten Commandments. Exodus 34, 28 confirms that. And I regarded them not, saith the Lord. Hmm. So all these fools today in these denominational, non-denominational churches, Harvest Bible Chapel being one of them, who claim they're following the Great Commandment under the Great Commission, For you to do that, you have to be Israel, you have to believe in the Messiah, repent and be baptized, you have to be under the new covenant, and then you're able to do that. But we know in Romans 9, 10, and 11, Paul tells us today in the dispensation of grace, because we're not after the cross before Paul is saved, okay? 
we know that Israel is fallen, Romans 11.11, 11, because through their fall, we have salvation today. If they have not fallen, if there's an Israel today on the map, then no one's saved by the free gift. Okay? For this covenant I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord, I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts, and I will be to them a God, and they shall be to me a people. Israel. I will make with the house of Israel after those days. So why people would think that that's for them when the Bible clearly tells us that Israel is fallen, I have no idea. They just do not believe their Bible. This is Old Testament, Matthew 3, 1. In those days came John the Baptist, preaching in the wilderness of Judea, verse 2, and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand, verse 6, and were baptized of him in Jordan, confessing their sins. Israel always had to confess their sins. They did not have the grace that we have, the body of Christ's truth, the revelation of the mystery, that kills our sin, okay? Matthew 4, 17, from that time Jesus began to preach and say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And they're preaching the kingdom gospel clearly. Before the cross, no one knew Paul's my gospel. Paul was not saved until Acts 9. Matthew 9, 35, and Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, not the gospel of the grace of God and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. Why was he healing people back then? Because he's making a kingdom of priests. Priests, back in Leviticus, had to have no spot or blemish. Okay, And for them to inherit the kingdom, they have to have no spot or blemish. That is why Jesus Christ healed. Okay, He didn't heal, like Benny Hinn claims, so you can have 10 more years of your life, so you can put into your 401k and see your kids go to college. Okay, that is not why Jesus healed anybody. So get over that one. This is a New Testament. This is the New Testament. And note, Paul is not saved yet, and there's no gospel of the grace of God. Okay, Acts 2.38. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Okay, for them to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, they had to repent and be baptized. How do we, re how do we receive the gift of the Holy Ghost? We have to believe in the death, burial, and resurrection. Okay, that's Paul's gospel, and this is Peter's gospel. Completely different gospels. Why? Because the Bible says they're contrary. Galatians 2.7. James 2.17, which is New Testament, written at Acts chapter 8, before Paul was saved. Even so faith, if it hath not works, is dead, being alone. Verse 18, yea, a man may say, thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me faith, show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show you the faith by my works. Okay, James was written about Acts 8, to the twelve tribes scattered, again before the Apostle Paul is saved. Okay, so there's no mystery truth. There's no gospel of the grace of God. There's no free gift. Okay, James 2.20. But wilt thou know, O vain man, the faith without works is dead. Baptism, confession, is always a law work in the covenant law program, in the prophecy program, in Israel's program, according to prophecy. Okay, notice, for the remission of sins um, is the gospel of the kingdom. It's not full payment. Why? Because they have to endure to the end. Why? Because they have to be a kingdom of priests. Why? They have to sell all their possessions. Why? They have to keep the commandments so they can inherit the kingdom. Then they're saved. Okay? That is far different than our program in the dispensation of grace according to the revelation of the mystery the body of Christ becoming a new creature seated in heavenly places where we have peace with God we've been given all spiritual blessings and we're sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise completely different program complete we are not to confess our sin we are not to get water baptized we have been um, baptized by Christ's death and it's dry, Romans chapter 6. And to confess our sin is just showing our ignorance that grace has not crucified our old man on the cross. And Paul makes it very clear in Romans 6 that we are to stop sinning.
Thanks again for listening. Hopefully these two keys help you a little bit more with your with your right division, with your Bible study, with keeping Israel separate from the church, the body of Christ. Um, don't forget to email me with any questions at buttnow at buttnowministry at gmail.com or reckonyourselfdead at gmail.com. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thanks again.